A stronger US dollar has unleashed currency intervention across Asia. Fed Chair Jerome Powell has just signalled high rates for even longer. China's GDP outstripped expectations. And New Zealand CPI data today should show disinflation progress. That's coming up in our Five Things in Five Minutes. And then in our bonus deep dive interview, ANZ economist Banzi Madhavani details what's at stake for fiscal policy and the rupee in India's general election, with voting set to run from April the 19th to the 1st of June. A stronger than consensus win could spur a modest rally in equity markets and that would support the currency as well. The caveat to bear in mind here is that the Reserve Bank of India will be watchful for any sharp volatilities or move in the currency. But first in 5 and 5 with ANZ, global currencies are being buffeted by a strong US dollar, triggering interventions across Asia. As traders bid in expectations, the Fed could keep rates higher for longer. Fed Chair Jerome Powell has just said it will take longer than expected for the Fed to be confident enough to lower interest rates. The US dollar strengthened overnight as Treasury yields rose about four basis points. The S&P 500 was down slightly after a sell-off in European stocks. The Aussie dollar was down half a percent at 64.08 US cents at 5am Sydney Melbourne time and the Kiwi down 0.3% at 58.86. That US dollar strength saw Indonesia's central bank intervene yesterday to support the rupiah, which was at its lowest point in four years. The Korean and Malaysian central banks said they were also ready to step in, and India's rupee hit its lowest level on record. ANZ head of Asia Research, Kun Go, says yesterday's move by Chinese authorities to weaken the yuan's fix against the dollar indicated just how much pressure there is. This has prompted central banks in the region to attempt to stem the depreciation pressure uh, through intervention. However, it's very hard for the regional central banks to fight against uh, the Fed at the moment, given that expectations for Fed rate cuts have been pushed out, uh, and it's very difficult uh, to really fight against a strong dollar at the time being. Uh, This also suggests that prospects for policy easing from Asia will most likely be delayed uh, because trying to go ahead of the Fed will only cause further weakness in their currencies. Number two, Chinese GDP was stronger than expected in the first quarter, with annual growth of 5.3%, beating the consensus forecast of 4.8%. ANZ senior China strategist Xiao Peng Xing says ANZ has revised up its forecasts for 2024 and 2025 annual growth, to 4.9% and 4.5% respectively, and sees the People's Bank of China only cutting interest rates by a further 10 basis points rather than 20 before. China export rose uh, 4.9% in terms of yuan uh, in the first quarter, but the export of price dropped 8%. So export quantum uh, increased 13 percent in Q1. We estimate that net export contributed to Q1 GDP almost 1.0%. Number three. Other China data, though, has muddied the picture. March retail sales and industrial output growth were lower than expected. New home sales by value were down 30% from a year ago. Xiao Peng says China has a two-speed economy. The domestic demand remain very weak. Both uh, retail sales, fixed assets investment, and uh, industrial production dropped below 5% mark. I think uh, this reveals that the domestic activity is still not uh, stabilized. Uh, policy measures should be added in Q2 to support, uh, to cement the 5% GDP uh, target. Number four. In New Zealand, Real Estate Institute figures showed monthly house prices fell 0.5% in March. ANZ senior economist Miles Workman says there is some downside risk to ANZ's forecast for 3% house price growth in 2024. There are a lot of moving parts uh, to come for the housing outlook over 2024. Uh, And uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a bit of a wild ride in terms of those drivers of housing momentum. Number five, March quarter CPI data will help show whether inflation is heading back towards the Reserve Bank of New Zealand's 1% to 3% target range. ANZ economist Henry Russell is expecting March quarter CPI of 0.6% and an annual rate of 4%. 
That's slightly above what the RBNZ forecast. To make further progress towards the 2% midpoint, disinflation is increasingly needing to be driven by the domestic and services components. Those are the more sticky components um, that are tied to the state of the labour market in particular. Henry Russell there. Now, in today's bonus deep dive interview, ANZ economist Bunzi Madhavani discusses the fiscal policy and currency implications of India's general election, which starts in a couple of days' time. So what are the different fiscal policies of the two main parties? The leading party is Bharatiya Janta Party and they have the alliance, which is the National Democratic Alliance, which are continuing to come together as one alliance, even in this one. So the BJP is generally perceived as a right-leaning sort of uh, political philosophy. Um, Their policies in the last two terms have focused on privatization and on opening the economy to foreign capital. At the same time, the policies have also focused on um, domestic self-sufficiency and resilience as well. Um, So policies like Atma Nirbhar Bharat and Make in India, which is focused on uh, reinvigorating um, domestic manufacturing, um, that's been the broad focus of the current government through the last two tenors. The Indian National Congress, which is the main opposition party, they are largely seen as a centrist party with welfare state kind of philosophy. In the past, though, the INC-led government have also introduced market reforms, which saw the transition of Indian economy from being a socialist state to a market economy. And for markets, if fiscal policy is slightly different... Would we see a divergence in where monetary policy hits? Yeah, I think um, this time around the markets have broadly priced in that the current government will be elected for the third term. So we talk about what the rupee could do in three different scenarios because it's very hard to sort of read beyond, read into the election outcomes, Um, even though opinion polls are suggesting that the NDA government would likely secure the third term. So um, we think there are three possible scenarios And what the rupee can do in each of these is that the first one is the NDA wins with an overwhelming majority. Now, I think that this result is largely in the price in financial markets, but a stronger than consensus win could spur a modest rally in equity markets and that would support the currency as well. The caveat to bear in mind here is that the Reserve Bank of India will be watchful for any sharp volatilities or move in the currency. And were that to materialize, it would step in and make sure that, you know, it it augments foreign exchange reserves for itself, but it also caps any undue volatile moves. The second uh, outcome that we think uh, is that could potentially materialize is that the NDA wins, but the margin is not as strong as expected. So somewhere sort of an underwhelming victory for the current government. In that instance, it's possible that the equity markets could see a bit of correction and that could lead to some portfolio outflows as well. And that will weigh on the rupee. But our view is that After that initial phase of correction, the rupee will broadly stabilize and it will trade in tandem with its fundamentals. And our view is that the rupee will gain modestly in 2024. And the Reserve Bank also will have appetite for it to gain once the Fed rate cuts do come through. So that's second instance in which how we're thinking of the currency. The third instance or the third scenario is that the NDA, the current coalition, loses Now, I think this is a tail risk um, and one that the market has not priced in. An NDA defeat would arguably lead to a set-off in equity markets and that will certainly weigh on the currency as well. Bunzi Maravani there. I'm Bernard Hickey. That was 5 and 5 with ANZ for Wednesday, April the 17th. Catch you tomorrow with the detail on NZCPI, Euro area inflation and UK inflation. This podcast contains general information only, not investment advice. You should obtain advice for your personal circumstances before making any investment decisions. Please view the podcast disclaimer available via your media player or eBay.